Good afternoon. My name is Brittany Bathia, and I'm the Director of Communications and Dissemination at the National COVID-19 Resiliency Network at Morehouse School of Medicine. Today, I'll be sharing an overview of the National COVID-19 Resiliency Network, discussing our goal as well as our objectives, the priority populations that we'll initially target, and give an overview of the community-engaged approaches that will apply to this work. This work was supported in whole by a $40 million award from the United States Department of Human and Health Services Office of Minority Health as part of the National Infrastructure for Mitigating the Impact of COVID-19 Within Racial and Ethnic Minority Communities. Our goal is to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on these vulnerable communities. We have six objectives for the National COVID-19 Resiliency Network. The first is to identify and engage vulnerable communities. The next is to nurture existing as well as build new partnerships. We also would like to engage vulnerable communities along the process of developing culturally and linguistically appropriate messages and materials. Our next objective is to also link those communities to new resources and new services by way of new technologies. After, we'll monitor and evaluate the impact, as well as disseminate some of the lessons learned. So the priority racial and ethnic groups um, that we are initially going to target include Asian Americans, Hispanics, African Americans, Native Hawaiians, and other Pacific Islanders, as well as Alaska Natives and American Indians. We're also planning strategies to target other vulnerable populations, such as those who are incarcerated, those who are justice involved, as well as those who may have disabilities or who are migrant workers. We have five priority areas that we're focusing initially for our efforts. At the time that we applied for the National COVID-19 Resiliency Network funding, these areas were experiencing higher cases of COVID-19 as well as higher deaths of COVID-19. However, our internal research team will continue to monitor the data to inform our target strategy. So these areas, states and territories include Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Navajo Nation, California, Hawaii, Texas, and Alaska. So now that I've covered the goal as well as the objective of the National COVID-19 Resiliency Network and shared a little bit about the characteristics of those who we are aiming to target, next I'll share with you the overview of the approaches that we're taking. So we're using the community-based prevention marketing approach, which is basically a community-based participatory research effort that blends principles of social marketing, theories and techniques with community organization principles to guide voluntary health behavior change among communities. The process will engage community members to provide technical assistance and capacity building in their communities to ensure that they're treated as equal partners in the implementation of this community-based prevention marketing. The steps for this process include mobilizing the community, assessing information gaps using qualitative and quantitative methods, then using those insights to select target behaviors for the priority populations that we'd like to promote, such as getting a COVID-19 test or getting a COVID-19 vaccine or participating in a COVID-19 vaccine trial. We then move into formative research and tailor communication tactics around the findings from that research. The next step would be to pilot test messages and materials with those community members, and then implement the distribution of messages and materials, monitoring the outcomes and impact, not just with understanding and comprehension and receptivity, but also the adoption of those behaviors. At Morehouse School of Medicine, we realize that the successful mitigation of COVID-19's impact requires that we use a learning health system application in which data are paired with experiences systematically and integrated with external evidence. This knowledge is then put into practice. 
So in order for us to apply this approach at Morehouse School of Medicine, we've developed what we call the PEDAL framework. The first to apply a health equity lens to the learning health system approach to transform healthcare organizations and communities. So the first step of the PEDAL framework is to prioritize health equity as a critical step in this work. Then, much like the social marketing approach that we're applying, you have to engage the community. We engage communities to help us better understand which issues and concerns and challenges that are important to them that they're experiencing should basically guide which health disparities that we approach. And then we act on data to learn and improve the steps that follow. So here are just a few public access Morehouse School of Medicine publications if you're interested in learning more about considerations for community engagement or for integrating health equity into a learning health system approach. Looking ahead, we're very excited to be collaborating with our partners on formative research as well as strategic planning. Over the last three months, we have onboarded a host of new staff members. We have began to build an infrastructure for the technology solutions that we want to implement with the community. And we've scheduled for new product launches in March of 2021. After the launch, towards the end of our year one funding, we'll essentially assess the outcomes and the impact from our efforts to share lessons learned and to hopefully improve the program for year two. Our team comprises of experts across primary care, health communications, community engagement, community mobilizing, as well as the political determinants of health. And we're very excited to continue this effort. So please stay in touch with us. If you'd like to learn more, you can visit www.msm.edu backslash ncrn. You can also follow us on Twitter at msm underscore ncrn. And you can contact us by email at ncrn at msm.edu. Thank you.